Hello, welcome to Lost in Movies with Alec Kerr, the film critic for the Conway Daily Sun. And this week, I'm joined by Lloyd Jones, uh, sports guy from the Conway Daily Sun. And I have I have Lloyd here because uh, we're going to be talking about baseball movies, uh, because you know baseball season is getting in the full swing. And so, yeah, we just kind of want to talk about some of our favorite baseball movies. Uh, we each kept it down to three. It was, it was tough to keep it down to three because I think we got a lot of crossovers and. I was stunned to find out how many baseball movies there actually yeah, are. I know. You printed out a list of like I had three 100. pages. I had three pages, and then you added on to it, and you're like, well, well what about this one? I was like, that one wasn't on the list. <laughs> and we also have some, some comments from, from users on Facebook, so we'll just do those first. They actually bring up a lot of the same movies that we're going to discuss. Oh, good. Um, but we have Bob. Uh, says major league when it comes to comedies, and then of course Field of Dreams. I've always had a I've always had a soft spot for Angels in the Outfield as well. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Meals uh, says Robert Redford, The Natural, hands down best baseball movie ever. Uh, Julie says Bull Durham. Derek says The Sandlot, of course. Joel says A League of Their Own, great baseball movie with a great cast. Also, hard not to love both Major League and Field of Dreams. Uh, Bob weighs in again, saying, I can't believe I forgot League of Their Own. Amazing film, a classic. Uh, let's see. Stephanie says, the first baseball movie I saw was Rookie of the Year as a little kid. That was so cute. And my favorite is a toss-up between a League of Their Own and Major League. Uh, Brian says, Christopher Lloyd in anything is amazing. So I'm going to have to say Angels in the Outfield. <laughs> And Ross says, Bad News Bears, the original with Malter Mathau, was great. Also, Bull Durham, probably the most quotable movie. Candlesticks are always a good gift. <laughs> that's a pretty good list right there. It's a pretty good list. And that pretty much covers everything we want to talk about. So I guess that's the show. Uh, um, come back now. Uh, I'm honored to have been here for three minutes. <laughs> I know. Uh, so I guess since the last one that was mentioned here, I know it's your first one, but I guess we'll go with uh, Bull Durham. So. Oh, I really like that one. I, I think for the longest time, I had League of Their Own as my favorite movie. Movie, but then uh, recently I've started wa I've watched Bull Durham a couple more times and it's just a really good baseball movie a good fun movie it's uh, it is excuse me what the hell's going on out here well Nook's scared because his eyelids are jammed and his old man's here we need a live was it a live rooster we need a live rooster to take the curse off Jose's glove and nobody seems to know what to get Millie or Jimmy for their wedding present okay, well uh Candlesticks always make a nice gift, and uh, maybe you can find out where she's registered, maybe a place setting, or maybe a silverware pattern. Okay, let's get to it. Here we go. It could actually be a date movie, I guess, in some respects. It is. I mean, uh, Susan Sarandon is in it, and she's very sexy. It's probably the sexiest she's ever been in a yeah. movie. And Tim Robbins, I mean, he just, who knew how comedic he could be? I know, I know. He's, and later in his career, he's always, he's kind of been doing more drama. But yeah. uh, he, was, he was really funny in that. And it was direct, written and directed by Ron Shelton, who actually was a minor league player um, in, I think, I believe it was 67 to 71. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why he, he got so much of this right, is that he knew what it was like to be in the minor leagues and to be there for like five years. Oh, I think you're. I think you're right, and you just get a classic behind-the-scenes look at what minor league baseball is all alike. With the park, you've got, you've got the players. Just uh, the the older guy who's kind of hanging on, and yeah. Crash Davis, who's yeah. Kevin Costner, and then you've got the rookie um, Epi Calvin Lelouch, yeah. who's looking for a nickname and looking yeah, to nuke. establish. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just um, just great extremes. And plus, uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is they're on the road, and the um, the broadcaster broadcasts actually from the old from the Durham Bulls home right. stadium and cracks a piece of wood and yeah. says, "There's a hit." <laughs> yeah, and and then there's just uh, you really get into the the head of the baseball players because you have every time Costner goes up to the bet to bat, he's talking to himself, and you know, all right, come on, bring bring it, bring it, you know, come on, mate. Bring me that weak ass, huh? Bring it, bring it, bring it. Yeah. Can you do? Come on, meat. You can do it. You know. And you see the superstitions too, yeah. where you've got. Oh, please rub my bat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because uh, Susan Sarandon's character, she's always picks one guy so that'll be her guy that she'll make better. And so Tim Robbins starts doing well. He starts 
pitching perfect games and and there's a winning streak and they stopped having sex. And so it's like, well, we can't have sex because we'll ruin the streak. And so she gets really frustrated. So that's just great stuff. There. He's wearing the nylons. He's breathing through his eyelids and he's <laughs> talking to himself. It's just. It's, it's great stuff. And uh, Ron Shelton also went on to write and direct another pretty, uh, pretty good baseball movie, Cobb. Oh, is he Cobb too? He also did Cobb. I like Cobb. Cobb is Cobb is good, and I, you know, he just knows baseball. That was hard to keep Cobb out of my top five, and then when we narrowed it down to three, I was like, oh, poor Cobb, he's yeah. off. So, but we got to mention it because Ron Shelton also did it. Yeah, so. great performance by Tommy Lee Jones. If you get a chance to watch it, yeah. he really uh, it was a lot of just Tommy Lee, and he did a great job. Yeah, no, and it, it's also. It's a, it's a biopic that doesn't pull any punches. He's, he's oh. shown to be a son of a gun, and uh, do, they don't try to make him rosy at all. No, I, I don't think there's any love lost for, for that character. When you'll say, God, I hate that guy, but he was pretty good. He was a pretty good baseball player. Um, okay, I guess my pick, I'll, I'll go with one that wasn't mentioned by any of our commenters, uh, Eight Men Out. It's uh, got some hometown ties. It does. It was directed by John Sayles, and uh, you had uh, Gordon Clapp in there as the catcher. Yeah, he was the catcher, and John Cusack was Buck Weaver in the movie. Yeah. Just a great ensemble cast. Yeah, D.B. Sweeney as uh, Shoeless Joe, and who else was in there? Oh, Charlie Sheen. I know, a little cameo by Charlie. Charlie and Sheen, and uh, do we don't, well, I don't want, I, don't, I decided before we did the show, I don't want to talk about Charlie Sheen and what's going on in his life, because we're also going to talk about Major League. Major League. And, uh, what I will say is you watch these movies, and you, do, you are reminded that he was very talented, very talented at one point. And I don't want to get into all of uh, all of his drama, but now uh, the director you had some hometown ties to here, yeah, right? Yeah, John Sayles, uh, along with Gordon Clapp and uh, David Strathern, um, they all they all were Eastern Slope in Playhouse guys. Really? Were they all, were they here together at the same time? I, I think so. Yeah. <sighs> Pretty special group. Yeah. And uh, yeah, David Strathern, he played uh, he played the pitcher. And uh, what's interesting about Eight Men Out is that you know these are these are players that you know are kind of loathed now before what they did, but the movie does a good job of trying to make them at least sympathetic and trying to understand why they did what they did. And some of them are just in it for the money, but some of them have good reasons for why they're doing it. Yeah, and Shoeless Joe, you just don't know about Shoeless Joe. Yeah. Did he take the money? He might have took the money, but he certainly played his tail off in the right. field. And, and he then, had over 370 in the World Series and did everything he could to help them win. And right. And then, you know, then you have Buck Weaver, who didn't take the money, but He's, you know, he's, he's, he's part of it because he didn't say anything, and yeah. so you feel bad for him feel as well. Feel association almost. Right, and yeah, and I, I, a movie that I know you wanted to put on your list, but it, it got cut, uh, was was The Natural, and I actually prefer this to, to it, the Natural. To The Natural, and uh, not that it's the exact same time period, because The Natural is 1935. This is 1919, but it's kind of a similar era. And they both seem kind of dark. Both movies seem kind of dark to me. Right. Just from everything, there's no big red or anything like that. It's, everything is kind of black. It yeah. Seems. And they're both kind of about corruption, and because uh, there's the owner corruption in the natural, and trying to be bribed there. So the whole bribery issue is is in both films. And I just think that the period details are a lot better in Eight Men Out. It feels more authentic. And I was watching the the making for Eight Men Out last night. And uh, D.B. Sweeney, who played Shoeless Shoe Action, was talking about how Natural had been made four years earlier. I was wondering which one came first. Uh, and that was made on a, a budget of $25 million. Um, and Eight Men Out was made on a budget of $6 million, But he was just like, you know, with our $6 million, I think we got better period details than they did with The Natural. Could you see trying to remake Eight Men Out with that, that cast and that, with that budget? It couldn't happen today, no. It, it, no, it couldn't happen today. Ah, that's unbelievable. Just yeah. $6 million? Yeah, and what they would do, it was really clever. Um, instead of trying to shoot the games uh, all in one day, uh, they would... You know, when they had the good light, they would shoot one game. And then when they had bad light, it's like, okay, now we got to switch to game five <laughs> because they had the different lighting. So it was really, they used, the, they used their schedule as tightly as they could. I think we've got a theme with your movies because Shoeless Joe just goes right into Field of Dreams. I know. So I guess, I, it's, well, let's go with your pick. But My pick, my, my second pick was Major League. I just, for some reason, that movie just is one that, if you're having a bad day and you're a sports fan, just put in Major League and just listen to Bob Uecker. Oh, yeah, just for Bob Uecker. Just Bob. Bob Uecker just had some incredible lines. I, I wrote down a couple of them, and 
he's just so funny. I, I just want to make sure I get him right for you, for you <laughs> folks. But where was he? He played the character Harry Doyle, and Hayward leads the league in most offensive categories, including nose hair. When this guy sneezes, he looks like a party favor. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't you just yeah. love that out of your hometown announcer? Yeah. I can see Rick West saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Vaughn has his sign and comes set. Checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch to Shaw. Swung on and belted to deep right field. Back goes Serrano. He'll need a rocket up his ass to catch this one. That baby is out of here. That looked like the Terminator, only slower. Maybe it was his out-of-stater, or it could have been the hibernator. That baby is definitely going away for the winter. Whatever for Vaughn, it might be see you later. He's probably going to become a spectator. And, uh, you know, and it's... I mean, it's great for, for Bob Uecker, but there are, there are other great things going on in, the, in that movie. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What a great cast. The, the fellow who plays Lou Brown, I think, is Dennis Gammon, I think was his name, and the, he passed away a few years ago, but he's the perfect manager. I mean, here's a guy who's semi-retired, coaching, coaching a, a rookie team, and he's also working at Sears, and he's got to decide whether he wants to sell white wall tires or come and co coach the Cleveland Indians. And he tells the general manager, can you call me back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and you have uh, uh, Wesley Snipes really early in his career. Very early. Uh, and uh, he's very funny. It's just, uh, he just, he doesn't even, <laughs> he just comes in and he's just like, kind of weasels his way onto the team. Yeah, Willie Mays Hayes. Willie May Hayes. And there he is sleeping at night, and they take him, take his bed, carry him out, and he thinks, he wakes up, he's, I've been cut already. And then he just runs in his pajamas, and he's the fastest guy on the field. And he just, play, he actually does comedy very well in yeah. this movie. I don't think he's ever done another one beyond that. He's, he's done some. Um, he used it, uh, well, another movie by Ron Shelton. Uh, really? <laughs> um, uh, White Men Can't Jump. Oh. Hated that movie. Hated that totally movie. hated that hated movie. Hated that movie. I think it's Rosie Perez. I think she could grade on anybody. Well, yeah, she does have a grading voice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and another thing that I really like, Alec, is when Tom Berenger, who just, he's, I guess he's probably the star of the movie. Yeah, you he say? is. Yeah, he is. He's the beat-up old catcher who's playing in the Mexican League. He's got a bit of a drinking problem and comes back, finds the love of his life, who he should have married, who was an Olympic swimmer. And then we get to the climatic scene, and it's the World Series, and Berenger comes up to the plate. He points out to the center field and you're thinking, oh, it's the Babe Ruth home run moment. And instead, all he does is he bunts. Yeah. He bunts. It was yeah. just like, nice. I like that touch. Yeah. It's a great, great little psych out. And, uh, yeah, and it was actually his, his girlfriend in it, uh, Renee Russo. It was her first movie. Oh, was it really? It was her first movie. Oh, gosh. It was the great, well. it's a great scene where uh, he kind of, like, crashes a party. Oh, and yeah. It's very, he just, he gets some great, like, kind of digs at them. And it was just a uh, her fiance and he did not get along no they did not <laughs> and and yes there and you have charlie sheen again the uh, wild thing the wild thing yeah who just uh gets can't can't pitch until he gets those glasses <laughs> no. and, where are you from kid oh california penal league never heard of it <laughs> yeah how'd you get in there stole a car <laughs> <laughs> and uh i can't remember the, but the uh the, the voodoo guy oh serrano yeah yeah he needs to get a Jobu whole. Dolls. Yeah, and he has to get a whole chicken, and <laughs> so they go to KFC. <laughs> Just, there's so many great, great moments in there. And you just, you just kind of picture that they could be the modern day ball players. They're reading the comic books on the classics yeah. on Moby Dick, and they're just. I liked it. Yeah, it's good, and we'll just forget the fact that it was a major league two and a major, a major league, league, league three with none of. Well, I mean, it had the reoccurring characters that were minor characters, but that you didn't Co have. Corbin Burnson, did he go to Major League Two or, or yeah. make a cameo? Like, wasn't he the manager then? Or Something GM? like that. I, I don't know. Yeah. It was just bad. But, um, yeah, we'll go back to, I mean, we'll do Field of Dreams. Uh, Field of Dreams is a... Uh, it's a baseball movie, but it's it's a lot more than a baseball movie because you have this, this this fantasy element. There's like time travel in there, and uh, it's just it's you know. And at the end of it, it is kind of like this this father son story. Yeah. Not to not to spoil the ending entirely. Oh, no, that's but it's, it's definitely a great family movie for anyone to watch. It is. Uh, James Earl Jones, one of his best performances, I think. Yeah, and then there's that, just that speech. That speech about you know baseball has always been there. 